Donald Trump is once again lashing out at the Fox propaganda network because they dared to conduct a very specific interview without his permission, and it's upsetting him immensely. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bells before you go. All right, friends, we have several clips to talk about in this video. Yeah, Donald Trump is yet again lashing out at Fox. I mean, Fox is catching strays, as the kids would say, from someone that they really don't want to offend, but have done so anyway, just by doing occasionally the bare modicum of journalistic practice. So what is Trump talking about? What is so triggering to him? Well, ahead of tonight's debate at 9 p.m. Eastern on ABC, the vice president is going to debate Donald Trump for the first and perhaps only time. And as a consequence, the Harris campaign is going on to Fox to be interviewed, to answer questions and to relay the Harris message, the Harris agenda to an audience that might not otherwise hear it. And Donald Trump is really uncomfortable about that. This seemingly suggests that he's very uncomfortable about tonight's debate and the potential that he might lose it and subsequently the election. So he went on Truth Social and said, why does Fox News keep putting on for endless periods of time Michael Tyler, Kamala's publicist, who spews nothing but lies like Project 2025, etc. Fox tries to be so politically correct when the other side plays for keeps. Ridiculous, all caps. Very funny that uh, Donald Trump has that perception or at least publicly displays the perception that Fox is politically correct, that Fox is not somehow heavily biased towards Trump, because of course they are, as we've discussed time and time and time again. Donald clearly has forgotten about the $787 million that Fox had to pay to settle a defamation suit with Dominion Voting Systems because the evidence was overwhelming that they knowingly signal boosted Donald Trump's lies about the 2020 election. That's how much in Trump's bag they are. That's how you know much they have his back. They paid nearly a billion dollars because they lied so egregiously on his behalf, defaming uh, Dominion voting systems. But that's insufficient, right? The fact that they're willing to have on the vice president's surrogates and her advisors, her officials at all is a betrayal to Donald Trump. Pretty pathetic stuff. And with that in mind, I want to play some of these clips uh, of the interview between Fox's Bill Hammer and Dana Perino and Michael Tyler. So we're going to play the clips and unpack them together. Listen, uh, tonight is a big night. Uh, we're excited about tonight and the opportunity that the vice president has to continue to introduce herself uh, to a wider swath of the American electorate and to con contrast her uh, vision for where she wants to take this country against that of Donald Trump, who wants to take us backwards uh, through his extreme and dangerous Project 2025 agenda. Um, as it relates to uh, the broader strategy, right, like we understand uh, that we have to be aggressive here over the course of uh, the final two months of this campaign. And so that's why tonight is important for the contrast. Uh, that we can provide to the American people, but it's why immediately following uh, this debate, we're of course going to honor 9-11, but we're going to hit the road immediately thereafter and do our New Way Forward tour, making sure that the vice president and Governor Walls are crisscrossing across all of the battleground states, that we have surrogates who are going to be hitting every single media market across every battleground state, uh, because as uh, Dan Pfeiffer and David Axelrod were discussing, this is going to be a very close and competitive election. It's going to come down to tens of thousands of votes in a handful of states. And so uh, we cannot afford to leave any stone unturned. And so that was in response to Hammer and Perino asking uh, Michael Tyler, again, a top communications official in the Harris campaign, uh, why the president or excuse me, the vice president hasn't conducted more interviews. And so what he's saying is, listen, uh, she's done an interview, a joint interview. She has this debate that we've been prepping for. And then not only will there be additional campaigning, but subsequent interviews as well, perhaps even on Fox, uh, although uh, they should be so lucky. But the fact of the matter is this is a very close and competitive election, uh, despite the fact that Donald Trump has done more interviews. As I would say, the fact that Trump has spoken more in front of cameras uh, doesn't really illustrate anything with respect to Trump's policy. We know, for example, what happens when he goes off script or off prompter when asked pretty simple questions about basic policy, like, hey, what are you going to do to cut the cost of child care in this country? And he goes on a two to three minute screed uh, replete with sentence fragments and non sequiturs that is you know, virally mocked by so many people. Trump really isn't a policy wonk. The fact that he's willing to speak words uh, that very often don't flow together in any sort of you know, basic structure that doesn't actually make him the more substantive candidate. So 
I, I like that answer from Michael Tyler. He's illustrating the various ways that the vice president has conducted outreach and tried to put herself in front of the American people. It just so happens to not be in ways that the Fox Propaganda Network would prefer because, of course, they want the, the vice president to conduct interviews that they can scrutinize and try to catch her in a gotcha moment. And so far, the vice president has not taken the bait. Another clip. What people will see is what her actual governing principles have been. It's about making sure we can actually uh, get common sense solutions done. Uh, you, you talked about health care, for example. She's proud of the fact that we were able uh, to build on the Affordable Care Act, right? Making sure that we capped the cost of insulin for seniors at 35 bucks, that we capped out of pocket our prescription drug costs for seniors at 2,000 bucks. It's, how, it's about how we continue to make progress uh, towards the goal of making sure that everybody has quality, affordable health care. Uh, this isn't about how far left you are, how far right you are. It's about who are you fighting for and how you're actually going to solve the problems that confront uh, this country. Again, that is why we've been able to build such a wide and diverse coalition that is less concerned about ideology and is far more concerned about how we actually get things done for the American people. So, again, this is a really important thing to mention because one of the things that Fox and MAGA and undoubtedly Trump tonight is going to do is try to suggest that the vice president is somehow ideologically inconsistent. And this also touches on you know, a previous video that we did with a, a, involving Fox and another uh, Kamala Harris surrogate, Ian Sams, uh, because he talks about this as well, that the vice president has her political principles, her ideological values, but she is well aware of the governing reality. She was a legislator when she was a senator from California in the United States Senate, but now she's an executive. She's second in command of the executive branch. She's helped President Biden govern the country. It's a different functionality altogether. And when you have that role and you have to deliver on legislation or when you have to execute executive orders, when the responsibility of day to day governance is upon you, you're probably much more painfully aware of the compromises, right? Especially when the executive branch can act much more unilaterally than a United States senator can. You know, United States senators have to divide power between themselves and 49 of their peers between two parties, right? Or excuse me, 100, 99 peers, between them and 99 peers, because uh, we have a split Senate, basically 50-50. So you have to divide power there. You share power with 99 peers. And then in the House of Representatives, it's 435 Congress people. And it's a bicameral legislature, which means in order to pass legislation, you have to get it through both chambers and then sign it into law by the president. But again, as a vice president, you have to govern and you have a much more active job in that respect. And when the political reality is that we're a polarized country in a deeply divided government, which is institutionally predisposed and advantaged towards the Republicans, the conservatives. Well, then sometimes you have to abandon those lofty ideals, even if you could just make it happen by snapping your fingers in an alternate universe. And so it's really not a contradiction at all. But of course, they're going to frame it that way. Of course, she can also say, well, this was done over four to five years worth of governing, whereas Donald Trump is inclined to change his opinion at the drop of a hat, literally within a 24 hour spread on the major issue of abortion and abortion referenda and constitutional rights to an abortion, depending on what is politically advantageous at the time, literally depending on who he's talking to. So it's not like Trump has much by way of credibility there. One last clip I want to show uh, kind of on the score. How's she going to take that on tonight? Yeah. Yeah, again, I mean, that questionnaire, this is not what she's proposing. It's not what she's running on. You want to talk about uh, immigration or border security? She's been very clear uh, about what she, how she is governed and how she intends to govern if, if she is president of the United States. Uh, you talk about border security, for example. Uh, she has made very clear that the bipartisan border security package that Donald Trump uh, blew up because he thought it would benefit him politically if it gets on her desk, she will sign it into but law. She that is what she's called, running on. That's she how she intends called that, to govern. that wall useless. She called it a vanity project. She called it a misuse of taxpayer money. So how, how, how are the 48 percent of the people that I just mentioned who didn't vote four years ago, how are they going to switch that in their brain and say, I believe you now? I think they'll see what, what the vice president has actually been focused on, uh, which is actually increasing border security, right? Making sure that we have more resources, more agents on the border. Uh, she's also been trying to tackle this uh, as somebody who is less concerned about himself, which is what Donald Trump has been done. They've been able to see, the American people have been able to see Donald Trump on this issue. There was a solution on the table. 
uh, that people like James Lankford were actually pushing for that was ready to go into law until Donald Trump said, don't do this, not because it's not the right thing to do, but because it won't benefit me politically right now to move on this. Uh, there is one candidate in this race that is actually serious about solving this issue, about solving all the issues that confront the American people. That's Vice President Harris. There's another candidate whose North Star is what's in his own personal self-interest. And that's that's Donald Trump. Again, masterclass performance by Michael Tyler there and a great answer. Now, the vice president doesn't support building the wall. Now, this is something that bad faith MAGA Republicans and Trump supporters have attempted to weaponize because the vice president has said that she will sign into law, uh, you know, a comprehensive bipartisan border bill um, or a budget that Republicans might include or earmark funding for a physical barrier at the southern border. But that's part of a compromise, right? The vi That would be part of an omnibus bill, not something, a provision that the vice president is deliberately seeking out because she has suddenly reversed her position on Donald Trump's border wall, which she is saying is, hey, listen, if we have a relatively good faith, relatively bipartisan border bill or part of a budget that is negotiated again in good faith and bipartisanly, it's not just getting, you know, for Republicans forcing everything they want down Democrats throat. And one of the provisions that we have to bite the proverbial bullet on is some funding for some sort of physical barrier at the southern border. Then so be it. That's not an unprincipled position. And again, it's predicated on good faith, bipartisan negotiation. So. But of course, Fox and MAGA Republicans are saying, see, the vice president says because she is willing to sign into law legislation that includes some funding for a physical barrier at the southern border, she supports Donald Trump's wall. She's flip flop. No, but that's the reality of executive governance that Donald Trump simply doesn't understand, even though he is professed to be you know, the, the deal maker, right? Even though that never manifested itself in his political career because he's infinitely less accomplished with respect to deal making than say President Biden or Vice President Harris and the proof's in the pudding there. But again, a great answer from Michael Tyler also pointing out that, listen, if, you, if Donald Trump wants to pick a fight with the vice president at that debate about the southern border, she has ample ammunition with which to wield against him, like the fact that he cynically, politically killed a bipartisan conservative border bill. Can it, it benefited Republicans certainly more than progressive Democrats? And Donald Trump destroyed it because he was afraid it would be a political win for President Biden. She can make the case that by doing that, simply by doing that, by recognizing that there was a problem and by frustrating good faith attempts by both sides in divided government to negotiate a solution to that problem, which was relatively more conservative than not, which had the support of not just conservative Republicans like James Langford, who helped write it, but also Lindsey Graham, a strident Trump supporter, Mitch McConnell, of all people. And it was endorsed by the Trump-loving, Biden-hating Border Patrol Union. If, you, if all of that happens and Trump deliberately kills it for cynical political reasons, then the vice president can make the case that Trump owns the border. Trump owns the issue at the southern border because he's deliberately sabotaged an attempt to clean up the mess. There's no – she can make the case to the American people that there's no universe in which we wouldn't blame someone entirely for a problem that they recognize and sabotage an attempt to solve. They would own that thing, Right. So she has a chance to make that case, and I hope she does so very persuasively. But yes, folks, this is the interview that has Donald Trump so tied up and not so upset that the Fox Propaganda Network would dare to bring on Michael Tyler and ask him very tough questions from a pro-Trump, pro-Republican framing. Donald Trump can't handle even a fraction of that because he's so fragile and sensitive, and he thinks he can issue commands to Fox from a top-down hierarchical paradigm, which goes to show – what the, what's that say about Fox, that Donald Trump thinks that that's the arrangement? Very interesting. It also betrays, again, a profound insecurity from Trump about this election and tonight's upcoming debate. In the meantime, as we delight in Trump's despair, let me know what you think in the comments.